Today we'll be installing the front and rear F10 axles as used in the Vanquish Phoenix Portal. We'll be starting with the front axle, which is bag A. Inside of bag A, you'll find a tube of grease and a container of thread lock. For the first step, you'll need to locate these plastic molded bearing retainers, the two open bearings, which measure seven by 14 by 3.5, the six bolt spool and the ring gear. Insert the seven by 14 by 3.5 millimeter bearing into the plastic molded bearing retainers. Then take the 30 tooth ring gear and place it over the spool. Locate the M2 by eight millimeter screws. First, make sure to clip the end off of the tube of thread lock. Apply a small amount of thread lock to the threads and loosely tighten down the screw. Repeat that same process with the remaining five screws. Once you have all those screws lightly installed, go through and do a final tightening in a star pattern. Next, install the bearing and bearing retainers onto the ring gear. Locate the molded third member and insert the five by 14 by five millimeter bearing on the inside, followed by a five by 11 bearing on the outside Install the machined pinion gear into the third member, and then insert your ring gear and bearing retainers into the third member. Using the four M3 by 10 button head screws, attach the ring gear assembly to the third member through the front side. With the third member assembled, now open the tube of grease, and again, make sure to cut the tip off of the end. Apply grease to the ring gear while rotating it. Spin the pinion gear just to make sure that a nice even coat of grease makes it onto all of the gear. Now we can drop the assembled third member into the axle housing. Make sure that the pinion is towards the top side of the axle housing. Locate four of the M2.5 by 10 screws and use those to attach the third member to the axle housing. Next, locate the brass reinforcement tubes. These will slide easily into the axle housing and the last few millimeters will be a press fit. You can use the tip of your pliers to get them pressed all the way in. Install the five by 11 by four millimeter bearings on the outside of the axle tubes. And now we're going to set this portion of the assembly to the side. Locate your stub axle and two M2 by 11 pins. Install the first pin closest to the shoulder. Then locate the larger portal gear and slide it over the pin. Then locate a six by 12 by four millimeter bearing. You will notice that this has a rubber shield. Slide it over the stub axle. Next, locate your outer portal cover, and we need to first install a five by 11 by four millimeter bearing in the top portion. Then we can install the lower stub axle. Then we can insert that second two by 11 pin, followed by the machined aluminum hex. Locate the M3 by three set screw. I don't recommend thread lock on this. Insert the set screw into the side of the 12 millimeter hex and lock it down. Repeat all those steps again to make a second assembly just like this one. Locate the inner portal knuckle and break it off of the parts tree. Locate the six by 11 by four millimeter bearing. You'll notice that this does not have a rubber shield. This goes into the bottom of the portal knuckle. Then locate the 12 by 18 by four millimeter bearing and put it into the top of the knuckle. These bearings overlap and you must do it in that order. At this time, I suggest greasing this lower portal gear. With a sufficient amount of grease on the gear, you can now assemble the two halves of the portal box. Secure the portal cover onto the portal knuckle with five of the M2.5 by 10 screws. Repeat this process for both the left and right steering knuckles. Now you can locate the upper portal gear and the inner axle shaft. You will note that there's a short and a long version of the inner axle shafts. The short version goes on the driver's side. You'll correspond to this knuckle. You can put the portal gear onto the inner axle shaft and then use that to line everything up to drop it into the knuckle. 
the grease that we previously put onto that lower portal gear should make its way onto the upper portal gear. Now we're going to insert the portal knuckle and inner axle shaft into the main housing. You will need to rotate the pinion likely to help everything fall into place in the spool. Once everything lines up, use the shoulder screws to attach the knuckle to the housing. These screws will tighten down until the shoulder hits the inner portion and still allows the knuckle to move freely. Repeat that same process on the passenger side. After completing those steps, you'll be left with a completed front axle housing. You will have two small shims left over. These can be used on the outside of the pinion shaft and these can be used to tune the amount of play that you want in between the drive shaft and the pinion gear. This is not needed, it's just an option for tuning. So you don't have to use them or you can use one, you can use both. It just depends on how you would like this to feel. Next, we're gonna move on to bag B for the rear axle. Starting assembly of the rear axle, we're going to start with the exact same steps as the front with assembling this rear third member. Repeat all of the steps that we covered in the first portion. With the third member completed, drop it into the axle housing. Again, use the M2.5 by 10 screws to attach it to the housing. It's important to note that this third member can be flipped. So for proper installation in this case, you need to make sure that the pinion output is towards the top side of the axle. Now locate the brass inner tubes and slide them into the axle housing. These are the same on each side, so it does not matter which side you put them on. Then install five by 11 by four bearings in the ends of those axle tubes. Next, locate your lower stub shaft. These are slightly different than the front with this shoulder being narrower on the rear portal stub. The process for assembly is the same though. First, you're going to insert a two by 11 pin followed by the larger portal gear. Then the six by 12 by four millimeter bearing. Before inserting, before inserting the stub through the outer portal cover, we need to install a five by 11 by four bearing in the top portion. Then install the stub through the portal cover, followed by the M2 by 11 pin and the 12 millimeter hex. Secure the hex in place with the M3 by 3 set screw. Before installing the cover assembly onto the axle housing, we need to put a 6 by 12 by 4 bearing onto that lower portal stub. Locate one of the rear axle shafts. These again are the same from left to right. You'll notice that one side of the axle shaft steps up towards the end where the other one steps down slightly. Find the end that has the step up and that goes to the outside of the axle housing. Locate the smaller portal gear and put it onto the end of that axle shaft. At this time, make sure that your lower portal gear is greased and then install the outer portal cover onto the axle housing. Secure the cover in place with four M2.5 by 10 screws. And finally, we can install the decorative aluminum oil fill cap. This is a scale detail that goes into this hole on the back side of the axle housing. There's also a plastic one included, but the anodized aluminum version is the one that's intended to be used. There is a small molded tool to allow you to easily screw this in without damaging the finish. Again, you'll be left with the two shims that can be used on the outside of the pinion. This is again a tuning option. They don't have to be used. Only one can be used or both can be used. It's up to you. It's just to adjust the gap of the drive shaft to the pinion. That finishes up the assembly of the F10 portal axles.